Hello you humans and weird and wonderful people, welcome back to my world of stuff. Well it's Friday lunchtime, about quarter to two. Um, I've, I hope you're enjoying the heat wave, it's now officially a heat wave in some parts of England. Although here in darkest Wales we haven't reached that point yet, but I think we're going to because it's been blazing hot for the last three or four days. Super hot temperatures, I've just had a relaxing hour oh, in the pool at my gym, um, nice swim and chill. Uh, so I feel slightly refreshed, but now I'm back in the car again. I'm starting to roast. Uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, first of all, thank you to the new subscribers who've come on board in the last few days. I do appreciate you all, as I've said before. I've now leapt up from 202 to 206 subscribers. So welcome aboard all the newbies. Uh, please join in the fun in a good commerce going, going forward because there's plenty of stuff to come on this channel. So now I do appreciate every subscriber and everybody who contributes and comments and even people who just look at things it's much appreciated right anyway it's uh friday afternoon i'm off to the cinema now uh, i've had enough of the heat for a while i'm off to see the new jordan peele magnum opus nope now i'm in two minds about this i'm not a big fan of his previous work for reasons i will expound later on but um this looks interesting and i think the review's been sort of mixed ish but um as usual i'll be the judge so anyway i will i'll head off to the cinema get out of this damned infernal heat and I'll speak to you on the other side. Hello there, welcome back. Right, uh, nope, I'm back from seeing nope. And um, I have some thoughts on the film. Now, first of all, I want to say it was a nope for me. It didn't work for me. Uh, the reason being, I think I have to come to the conclusion that Jordan Peele and I aren't quite on the same wavelength cinematically. And I'm sure that's not going to bother him at all. And I know I've read reviews and I've read comments from people. It's quite a divisive film. A lot of people have dubbed it and think it's wonderful. A lot of people are a bit confused. Some people think that the narrative doesn't work. And I'm in that latter camp. The narrative for me doesn't hang together. Now, I said I've never been a big fan of Jordan Peele. Get Out was released in 2017. And I think that that had a really interesting premise, made some interesting sort of social points, but let itself down in a final act, which just tumbled for me into 50s B-movie territory. I'm not going to spoil any of these films if you've not seen them yet. But I think that when... The resolution arrived in Get Out. I was like, seriously, what? Uh, Us came out then in 2019. Again, an interesting idea about the concept of people having these sort of doppelgangers that were hiding beneath the surface, who came to the surface every day on. There was this huge community there. Uh, again, an interesting premise that for me fell apart in the last act when it just went too far. Now, it's interesting with fantasy films and science fiction and horror because you're talking about a heightened reality anyway, where anything goes in theory. So why is it that something should appear far-fetched? I hate the expression far-fetched because it's just, you know, if you've got an imagination, if you like imaginative things, nothing is far-fetched. But I do think that if you're creating a fantasy narrative or a fantasy world or a fantasy story, you need to have certain rules. You need to have certain boundaries over which you don't wander for fear of compromising what the story that you're trying to tell. I think that's what Jordan Peele has done, certainly in those two films. They just went, they stepped a bit too far so that they became absurd. They lost that element of believability that they may have had within the fantasy genre that they were operating, if you see what I mean. So I felt that the problem, I think, with Jordan Peele is he insists on writing his own scripts and telling his own stories. And I think he has some great ideas, some really interesting ideas, but can't quite bring them to fruition. Certainly not for me. I've, I found them unsatisfying because there is a sense that someone needs to pull them back a little bit and knock them into a, a shape that makes them work better as stories. And I, I think it's the same with Nope for me. Although it doesn't hurtle into absurdity in the way that the last two did, it has problems in that it just feels very uneven and it feels very random and disconnected because there's a lot going on. Um, and there's probably things that I missed in the film, symbolism and references and things. But then I think if you're looking out for stuff like that, there's a problem in the story that you're telling. It's all very well to have little nods and references. But if you if you 
burying the point you're making deep underneath your story. There's a problem with your story. Uh, the film has got a, a decent cast. It stars Daniel Kaluuya, who is um, a sort of a regular Peel collaborator. He appeared in Get Out. Uh, we know him, of course, from TV series like um, Psychoville. He appeared in a Doctor Who episode. He's a seasoned actor. He was in The Fades on BBC Three a few years ago. And uh, he's teamed up in this with Kiki Palmer. Uh, both good performers. Kiki Palmer brings a vibrancy to the film. She has got the energy. Um, I think Daniel Kalulu is a great actor, but his performances always seem to be characterised by this sort of sullenness. You know, I don't think he's ever cracked a smile in anything he's been in. Certainly in this, he doesn't have much in the way of dialogue. It's all carried by his expressions and his demeanour, which is just miserable and it's the way he seems to play a lot of his roles i'd like to see him lighten up a bit i know he's done comedy in the past um but i'd like to see him perhaps not play somebody quite so encumbered by the burden of the character he's playing um anyway they play um two um brother and sisters the haywoods who run a company supplying uh horses and animals for film and tv productions um, they're the descendants of a family who earned a living doing this generations ago. And that's a, a, one of the points that the film makes is that um, the importance of the family who started all this 100 odd years ago has been sort of forgotten by time, and whitewashed, if you like. Uh, but they're not really making a success of this particular business now. Things aren't going very well for them. Um, and they end up out in this sort of uh, desert um attraction sort of holiday attraction sort of ranch area which is out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the desert if you like outside california uh and comes to the attention that there's something in the sky there's something moving through the clouds that's affecting the electricity in the area and is making animals disappear uh and they investigate this to find out what it is because they think that Perhaps if they can exploit it or they'll take photographs of it or record it, they can make some money from this uh, by exposing this unidentified flying object. And the film progresses along those lines as this thing appears and buzzes them and, and swoops people up, uh, spits out organic matter, inorganic matter, which sort of links back to a family tragedy in their past. Um, in the meantime, we also have the sort of storyline about a character played by Stephen Yeun, who you'll remember from... Um, the Walking Dead, he played the doomed Glenn. Um, he plays a character who, uh, uh, called Jupe, who runs uh, Wild West, who runs the Wild West theme park. And um, we, we're, we're privy to his history where he was a young boy on the set of a TV comedy program, one of the cast of whom was a, a tame chimp, until the chimp went bananas. <laughs> and killed a lot of the cast. We flash back to this, and it, it's obviously been a traumatic experience for the young Jupe who was hiding under a table, watching all this happening, um, and had to watch the chimp being killed by the police when they arrive on the scene after he's wreaked havoc on the set. This is something which has caused trauma for Jupe and sort of haunted him throughout his life. But so what? Because Jupe disappears halfway through the film, and you sort of think, well, what's that? got to do with the rest of the film where's the connection and maybe i missed the connection it's not impossible but that just seemed to be a bit of background flavor to a character who's not hugely important in the film because the main characters um are oj and his sister uh emerald and they are the ones who pursue this thing that's in the sky and which forms the, the sort of the second half of the film which I enjoyed more than the first half. The first half I just thought was meandering and, and dreary and colourless and a bit lifeless. Uh, when we then get into the meat of the story, which is this thing which is in the sky, it becomes more interesting because that sort of stuff is interesting. And then it's good design. It sort of, it appears to be a classic flying saucer, silver disc type thing, which appears to be almost like a balloon sort of canvas. You see it rippling and moving and this sort of gaping hole opens and it sucks people up. Um, which is quite a, a classic sort of science fiction thing of sort of alien abduction. Uh, um, um, OJ and uh, Emerald enlist the help of a couple of friends who've got uh, cine cameras that don't rely on electricity so they can record what's happening. Um, OJ has to get a little bit closer than 
you might feel safe on horseback getting close to the thing to try and draw it out and it buzzes around it changes shape it becomes this huge billowing thing in the sky which is eventually apparently destroyed when they lure a huge inflatable um, inflatable figure from the ranch, the West, uh, Wild West ranch that goes up into it and causes it to explode. The end. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. And I'm sorry I've given away the ending, having said there weren't going to be any spoilers, so I do apologise for that. Um, yeah, it's an odd one. It is it is an odd one. And there were things about it that I liked. I think the cinematography is gorgeous. I mean, seeing it on the big screen, you've got the wide vistas of these locations, these massive locations out in the desert, which look desolate and, you know, the rocky, the mountains. It's that classic Western landscape, if you like. You could almost imagine John Wayne and his posse riding through the, the valleys and the canyons. And the score is superb. There's this very rousing score, which I think deserves to be in a better film, frankly. It has elements of a sort of a Western type score, but it's it's quite tuneful and it, it it adds excitement and tension where there probably isn't a lot in the story itself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it, I came out of it thinking, well, well done, Jordan. You've done it again. You've delivered another underwhelming film. And I think it is just that I'm not tuned into his sensibility. And I know a lot of people have picked up a lot of things for this film that perhaps I haven't. Uh, but like I said, the whole thing with Jupe's character, Stephen Young, I, I, I don't see how... That has anything to do with anything else that went on because Jupe's character isn't a major part of the story. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a baffler. It's a bit of a baffler in terms of what I thought of it. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the previous films. I was just disappointed by the slight clunkiness of the storylines. I didn't hate this. Um, I found it hard to get going. But when it did get going, the last forty minutes or so were quite exciting because you see this thing in the sky and to its credit it's not explained really where it is what it's there for what it's doing where it's come from you don't see whatever's in it if anything is in it so there's a nice ambiguity and a mystery in that but that's not enough to support this spare and sparse storyline now i will say jordan peele is a good director he certainly knows how to put a story on the screen how to bring the best out of his locations how to bring the best out of his actors but I think the problem that he has is in his scripts. And I would love to see him direct somebody else's script. If he could bring this sensibility to a more ordered, tightly put together script, that would be interesting. I think we could probably see what he could do there. But for me, Nope was a frustrating experience because there are elements that I really liked and it was sort of reaching for something which I don't think it knew what it was reaching for. And it just blurred the issue with lots of, obscure imagery and references that I think don't really amount to a lot. Um, apologies if this review has been slightly incoherent and rambling, but it is that sort of film, even though I've had time to think about it. I didn't want to just trash it because it, it deserves better than that, but I don't think it deserves all the approbation and the claim it seems to be getting from some quarters. But then again, it's all down to the individual. Some people may get things from films that other people don't, and that's perfectly fine. But Nope didn't work for me, and I think it's the thing now that Jordan Peele's films don't work for me. Um, he, he sort of toys with the elements of the blockbuster film and then tries to do something different with it. But in trying to do that, he he wanders off the path of good storytelling. And that, to me, is the most important thing. If you're making a film, you need to have a good story, you need to tell it cleanly and clearly. And I don't think he's quite mastered how to do that. Although, as I say, some people do appreciate it. Uh, nope is in cinemas now. Let me know what you think of it. You may well have seen it and think it's a masterpiece. If you do, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about it because I would be really interested to hear what you think. As I say, I've got a bit of a, a blind spot with Jordan Peele's films. I don't, I'm not on that same page with him. And I wish I was because he's much acclaimed. And I, I wish I could join the crowd of people who think he's the new auteur of genre filmmaking. And I, I just think it's a bit of Emperor's New Clothes at the moment. Anyway, that's Nope in Cinemas now. Tell me what you thought of it. I'm going to give it, by the way, a 4 out of 10 um, because it looked nice and sounded nice. Anyway, that's me done for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Um, and I'll see you soon. Until I do, keep taking the stuff.